Okay, what we got here is a 2002 Chevy Silverado 1500. It's a four-wheel drive. This truck is used for hunting in South Texas. So it is kind of dirty, kind of beat up, but it still has to pass inspection, which means dashboard lights have to be out. This truck is showing a ABS light. I just came from AutoZone. They told me there are three arrow codes showing up, one for each of the front analog brake sensors, speed sensors I guess they are, and one for knock sensor. Knock sensor I'm not interested in right now, we'll do that later, but I've got to take each one of these uh, speed sensors out, clean them up, and see if that's going to solve the problem. New ones run about $60 a piece. I'll try to avoid that if at all possible, so I'll just try cleaning them up, see if that works. First thing that has to happen, the entire caliper has to come off. There are two bolts, one right here, 18 millimeter, and one underneath, also 18 millimeter. Pull those out, this whole unit will come out, and I need to set it up on top there so it uh, stands out of the way. I'll have to loosen this because this right here is the speed sensor wire. And then I'll lay the caliper right up on top of there, pull the uh, rotor off. The sensor will be right behind there. I think it's held on with just one screw. Pull that out and we'll just clean it up. I'll uh, give you a few shots along the way. Okay, this is what holds the sensor in place, the sensor cable. It is a 13 30 seconds or 10 millimeter. Both of them fit on there real snug. So either or. I have the feeling that most of the parts associated with the axles on this vehicle are metric because the 18 millimeter fit the bolt that held the caliper on, but I couldn't find an imperial measurement socket that would fit, on, fit it well. Okay, I've removed the brake caliper and the bracket that was holding it down. Set the caliper back here. Let's take the rotor off. And that right there is the analog brake system speed sensor. There's a bolt right there holding it on. I'll loosen that and then gently twist the sensor back and forth and try to loosen it and then pull it straight out. Okay, there it is. It looks like it's got some grease and stuff on it shouldn't really affect the way it works but I'll get all that cleaned off and hopefully uh, this one will be working there's a hole that that sensor fits in probably can't see down into it but down the bottom of that hole is a sprocket that rotates with the axle and it, it's like the uh, the gear on a bicycle except the tops are flat and what happens as that turns each of those comes very close to that little piece of metal right there and when it does get close it induces a, a very small voltage in there and the 
analog brake system computer picks that up and determines how fast the uh, the wheel is actually turn turning from that. Another thing I'll do while I'm in here is reach up here. I'll follow this speed sensor wire up in here, and there is where it connects to the rest of the system. If you have to replace this, you disconnect it here, put the new one in, and replace where the line goes. But I'm going to pull this connector apart and make sure the connections are clean and try to determine if or not there might be some breaks or corrosion anywhere. One more test I thought I would do. I saw this on YouTube. And that's the test the sensor to see if there was any <coughs> any kind of voltage coming from it. What I've done was disconnected this connector from where it goes up in there. I've got a couple of alligator clips plugged in. There are two little pins in here and they're separated by a tiny piece of plastic in there. So I'm pretty sure that these two clips are not touching. And I ran those over to the probes of my voltmeter. And right now I've got it set on Two thousand millivolts. Let's see if I can find a place to prop this up so you can see it. Now what I'm going to do is spin the rotor, and I should be able to generate some kind of voltage from that sensor, and it should show up right there. But it's doing absolutely nothing. And that tells me that that sensor is not working. Bad news for me. As long as I had it hooked up like that, I thought I'd switch the scale over to ohms and see if I could get any kind of uh, meaningful reading. And no matter where, which range I check, it's showing me that it is open. There's no connection between the two terminals inside that plug. Now, I'm not exactly sure how that sensor works, but I'm assuming that it's just a coil in there. Whenever that sensor comes across one of those little sprockets like this in the top of that gear down there, it induces a current, a voltage in that coil. But just by just the fact that it's a coil tells me that it should have continuity between those two pins, and I'm seeing none. That tells me that there is a break in the wire or the coil inside that sensor has gone bad. Okay. I took it back off. I was testing continuity through this to see if uh, there might be open wires. And of course, I showed you before the worst. Oh, there was an open between the two pins. Um, but being the kind of guy I am, I couldn't stop there. I did some further testing. I went and got a fish hook. And it was right there. Connected it to one of the leads of the voltmeter. The other lead of the voltmeter is going to one of the pins in this wiring harness here. And what I did was I took the other lead. I don't know if I can show you how I was doing this. I took the other lead, where am I? With the fish hook attached and just started stabbing it into the wire. while I was looking at the voltmeter. And if I come into contact with the wire, the voltmeter should start to read zero. And by going through a process, I started down at that end and stabbed the wire periodically along its length all the way down to here 
and I found that the wires that lead from those pins down to here are good. So if there's an open in here, I'd say it's somewhere inside this little box where the coil is. If the coil is probably open, no good. So at least on this side, I know I have to, I'm absolutely certain I have to replace this. That's probably about $60. Now I get to put it all back together and go check out the other side because the uh, Advanced Auto Parts computer diagnostic told me that both the front uh, sensors were not reading. Okay, this is the passenger side. I've got the wheel off, caliper off, and the uh, rotor off. <clears throat> I disconnected the wheel speed sensor from back up in there. Put my alligator clips on the pins inside there, ran them over to my voltmeter. And right here, I'm reading ohms. And instead of it being showing a, an open circuit this time, I'm actually seeing some resistance. So this is telling me that the coil in this sensor is still good. And when I switch this over to a DC display and turn the wheel, I'm getting voltage going across there. So that's telling me that this sensor is good. A question in my mind though is when I went to Advanced Auto Parts and they plugged in their computer diagnostic tool, it told me that both these sensors were bad or that the computer was not getting readings from both of them. Let's put it that way. So that leaves me with a big question. Why? I'm going to check the connector back up in there and make sure it's not dirty or if it just wasn't very well connected and we'll see if that makes a difference. Okay, I've got the other side put back together. Like I said, this uh, wheel speed sensor here appears to be working. Tomorrow I'll take it to AutoZone instead of Advanced like I took it today and see what their code reader says. <clears throat> I also got up underneath, I traced the speed sensor wire all the way to the front up underneath the other side. It joins with the speed sensor wire from the driver's side. It goes down and then back to the uh, analog brake control board which is underneath the driver's seat underneath the frame pulled out the connectors there they all look nice and clean so it doesn't look like the corrosion is a problem I have heard that uh, some of the solder joints inside that control module can go bad so I'll be trying to figure out how to get that out dismounted from underneath the vehicle and uh, open it up see if I can't do something about solder joints but for now it looks like this side's okay. The other side is definitely open, not working. So that's at least a $60 repair. But anyway, purpose of this video was just show you how to get to it, how to take it off, how to check it. Fixing it, well, it's just a matter of buying parts, exchanging this out. Appreciate you watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to click on like. Thanks a bunch. Thank you.